Okay, YouTube, I'm, I'm at it again. And today I want to show you um, another video of my, one, well, a couple of my, my projects. As some of you may recall in my previous videos, I had a, a, a do-it-yourself lawnmower generator that I made uh, with an old uh, lawnmower engine that I had for a while. And I just want to show you a brief update. I've updated that particular lawnmower uh, engine to be a uh, Predator engine that you can get from Harbor Freight uh, for like 99 bucks or something. This particular engine is a 173cc engine. As you can see, it's a Predator engine. And it's uh, 6 horsepower. And uh, that alternator is a GM style alternator. It's a 120 amp alternator. It's an 100, a one wire 120 amp alternator. Um, the, the contraption itself, both the, in the engine and the alternator, they're both sitting on top of a uh, steel plate that I got from epicenter.com. Um, what I had to do is I had to mount it in a kind of a special way. I had to mount it at least about an inch above the plate so that the uh, pulley, which is underneath here, this is the pulley is under here. Uh, the pulley is a four inch in diameter uh, cast iron pulley that fits on top of a seven, uh, seven, eighth, seven eighths of an inch uh, vertical shaft from the engine itself. Um, the, uh, the diameter of the shaft is uh, seven, eighth, seven, seven eighths of an inch, okay? And I had to mount it on there, and, and it's mounted on some two by fours and so forth. And it's this is subsequently mounted on a a dolly that I got from Ace Hardware. Now, uh, you know, I took some some folks, uh, some people's advice as far as using a uh, propane conversion kit that I bought uh, online. Um, I forgot where I got it from, but you can you can find find it online. This is basically. A, uh, some type of regulator type device and underneath here is an adapter you can see it right there there's an adapter that fits right in front of the carburetor and uh, you can see you know the lines that's coming from the uh, the gas line coming from the uh, regulator device to my propane tank now I at one point, I thought that I wasn't getting enough pressure uh, coming out, enough volume of, of the gas. So I also purchased this item here. This is a, uh, a regulator that uh, they recommended. I also have a fuel gauge here. And as you can see, that connects up to uh, the overall unit itself. Okay. And um, now this is connected to my... Uh, my latest uh, backup power unit, as you saw in my previous video videos, I had a couple of terminals uh, coming off of the back right there. And this unit will feed into this here, this particular, my portable power unit. Now, some people may ask the question, well, you know, how do you know, uh, you know, how big of an engine to get when you purchase, let's say, a, an alternator like this? What you have to do is, you, again, it's all in the mathematics. And what you have to do is, this is a 120 amp alternator. And the voltage, if it's working right, will be 14 volts. So what you have to do is you have to calculate the, you know, the power, the wattage, okay, of this, the wattage requirement of this particular alternator. So in this case, it will be 120 um, times 14. And that will give you some number. And then what you have to do is you have to take that number and divide it by 746 because it takes, um, you know, uh, one horsepower equals 700 and, uh, 746 watts, okay? So you take the number, the, the, the wattage requirement of this particular alternator, and you divide it by 746. That will give you uh, the, um, the appropriate horsepower. However, Knowing that these these things are not efficient, so it's not a one-to-one -one relationship, you have to then take that particular number and multiply it by two for the inefficiencies. Let's say let's say this entire unit was only fifty percent efficient. So you take the number that you know, and then you divide and you multiply it by two, and then you add one for you know the you know the belts and so forth that that are connected to the pulley. And then that'll give you your horsepower requirement. Now, when I did the mathematics on this, 
um, you know, according to what I just said, th those calculations, it says that, you know, hey, it's going to take a, a, an engine with at least 5.5 horsepower, five and a half horsepower in order to run this. Now, that's a conservative estimate and so forth, and that's thinking that this system is very inefficient and so forth. So I'm saying, okay, I'll, I'll need at least a, an engine that's 5.5 horsepower. However, this is a six horsepower engine, so this should be more than enough to uh, drive this amp, this amp to uh, at least close to maximum capacity, which is 120 amps. Now, I've got this system connected up to my power pack here or my portable power unit and then from here I'm going to I have it plugged into my Magnusine inverter here through this you know through connected up through the extension cord to the watt meter now as it stands right now my power my inverter is at full charge and it's drawing power from my portable unit there Okay, so that's what's going on here. Through, from that inverter, this inverter here, this is an 800 watt uh, pure sine inverter, 800 watt continuous pure sine inverter. It's actually feeding power to my MagnaSine inverter here because this MagnaSine inverter also has the ability to charge batteries from AC input. So from this particular AC input, my batteries uh, are being charged. Now, if they are all, if they're being charged, what's happening also is the AC power coming in from my portable unit right there. The AC power coming in is also feeding my critical loads. Okay, it's basically it's it's called pass through. That's what's happening. It's called pass through. So. So right now, the power is passing through my inverter, going up to this particular box here that's being fed back to my sub-panel or my transfer switch here. So right now, the loads in my house, these four circuits, are being powered by my portable uh, backup unit right here. Now, in the event that I need to charge the batteries, all I need to do is start up the, uh, my, um, my do-it-yourself lawnmower generator, and it will supply 14 volts um, at a you know, maximum of 120 amps to this battery here. So it, it's, it will be more than enough to compensate. Okay? I'm going to show it to you running, uh, hopefully, and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay? Stand by, YouTube. Is the input going into my inverter you can see there that the indicator says it's float it said full charge full charge battery bank is at 28 volts there's nothing coming out of it and I'm going to show you what it's powering circuits now I just showed you those four circuits what those four circuits are actually powering or pulling is I don't know if you can see it but it's 560 watts 
roughly, 550, yeah, around 560 watts that my little portable unit is supplying uh, to the house through my Magnuson inverter. If my batteries were empty or needed charging, this indicator would say charging. And so that my portable unit right there that's running off of propane, my portable unit would be charging my batteries. Okay, so that is why I built my portable unit and my do-it-yourself lawn generator. Okay, that's why uh, our lawnmower generator. That's why I built it. So that kind of gives you an idea, okay, of what I have this for. So in the event of a power outage and it's raining in my solar panels that are charged currently, you know, charging my battery too. In the event that my solar panels could not, um, let me shut this door here. In the event that my solar panels could not uh, charge my batteries because it was a cloudy day, then I can pull out my little lawnmower generator, hook it up to my uh, portable um, backup unit, and charge my batteries and power the things in my house, like the freezer and, and so forth, refrigerator, and at the same time. So, okay, you two. And, uh, you know, thanks for your viewing. And if you have any questions or comments, hey, let me know. Thanks a lot.